So in this pond we've got the Siamese carp, the Mekong catfish and a few Chinese big head carp. Uh, they're all putting on the weight very well. We don't really see the Siamese that much. They, they tend to come up just in ones and twos. Uh, the big heads come up in a shoal and the Mekons just come up and crash on the surface chasing the shrimp now and again and taking some pellet. It looks a little bit scummy guys, it's just that every now and again uh, I strim round one side every couple of days and the, the, the grass flies in there just trying to keep a little bit of algae in there otherwise it was it was just crystal clear i think that's why we had a bit of a cormorant issue since it's colored up a little bit um no more cormorant ruby tilapia pond there's probably about 20 in here oh, they're all ready waiting to come for a feed these are a nice side this is what we use for for the pan if we can catch them now it's a, a very very small hook and fine fine fishing line to try and catch these uh, but they're very clued up I think uh, most of them will stay in here until it's time to, to drain it down so I'm not sure whether I'm going to put some giant snakehead in here uh, once once this lots out I'm not I'm not sure I don't know whether they're all going to go in the lake or not I'm maybe just keep one one breeding pair in the tank uh, there's five java barb in here and there's one it's well over the two pound mark. He's an absolute beauty. I don't give an awful lot of pellet. Uh, normally it's just one or two handfuls three times a day. Every time I walk past here, I tend to throw a handful in this corner and try to get them used to me and being here. And then it is a little bit easier hooking them. Uh, but what I normally do is, is hide under the coconut tree here and uh, use quite a long fishing pole throw the pellet in but I've put my hook right against the wall uh, so there's less line visible I uh, don't even use a proper float now I, I, I tie a little bit of a stick on there I say they're so clued up you've got to be very very stealthy the walking catfish pond a lot of them are pregnant now uh, what we were doing is is catching a couple of day and mincing them up and throwing them in the lake for the for the fish in there but some of them are such a good size now some of these are bigger than the ones in the lake so if we get a, a skinny small one then yeah we chop it up and, and bin it in there onto the lake itself the main event uh, i don't feed them an awful lot of pellet again it's just two or three times a day just a few handfuls and mainly it's to keep them round the culvert area here which above here we've got a solar powered well, it's almost like a street light we ordered two off lazada first just to see what they're like because they, they weren't particularly cheap and I'm always a little bit skeptical with the solar solar powered things uh, but it is so robust and powerful and uh, we leave it on all night it comes well it comes on automatically but there's lots of different settings on there and yeah it lights up down here and the bugs fall in so it's great right let's feed this lot I don't fish in here very much uh, me and Toon do do sometimes we, we, we fancied a feeder to lapid the other day so um, we came down here the problem you've got is there's there's so many walking catfish and well there's not that many in the lake to be fair but they they certainly know where the food is and they just hang around here all the time so uh, actually fishing and trying to not catch them so say if you kept, caught 50 fish now I suppose we catch about seven or eight walking catfish you can't throw much food in well what tends to happen is um the walking catfish say they're always there once they start taking the pellet then all the barbs come and all the tilapia uh, you'll see little baby sawai down there that's another reason why we don't particularly fish it an awful lot there's a lot of a lot of young fish in here and we, although we use barbless hooks um you don't want you don't want to be catching your young fish too much so it's, it's normally a big bait and a big hook and try to deter, deter the, the small stuff oh there's a little fish doctor there a little climbing perch just come up there's a tilapia there just under the surface and we've got the silver barbs we've also got barbs that have got yellow fins uh, red fins also got um the soy which is like a, a dace 
they're probably our favorite ones for doing um fermented fish for the bala my shrimp trap over there every day without fail i'm getting the baby marble sand goby in there i've got i've got one in that pot and just over here and one in that pot yesterday during the day as well which was a surprise you normally seem to get them night time so there's obviously quite a few around it's not obviously the same one because i'm getting different sizes the sawai it's very surprised since we put them in they've taken on the color of of uh play colored water toons nicknamed them our golden sawai sounds posh doesn't it so the striped catfish and when we put them in they were quite bluey purple uh, and now yeah golden sawai um, you might think, well, Lee, you're not putting enough food in here. It's just alive with fish. Um, the fry in here is just it's off the scale. I'm um, getting loads of baby barb in these shrimp traps. The shrimp traps are here just purely to get the food for the for the giant snakehead. Uh, um, we also are putting in uh, the the old cabbage and stuff from the the guy in the village with the stall on the market. So we put that in and uh, just about everything eats those what have we don't really see are the giant garami that we put in the paku and the really big sawai the the big striped catfish well say really big about i don't know 15 15 20 pounds something like that but they seem to be uh found somewhere that they're happy away from the uh away from here where all the activity is all these tilapia have originated from our stock that we bought with us from the village house where we used to grow them in concrete tanks and they were the the ruby colored tilapia we bought from a guy just selling them out the back of his car the benin that we used to catch in the world when we first set up our video channel on on youtube we used to do lots of fishing videos down an old basically a gravel pit and it was free to fish and uh, yeah we used to have some really good days there you used to get sort of like 10 20 pound of tilapia not too much trouble free fishing you just turn up and get in there very few people used to fish it during the rainy season because it was quite a big body of water and um, what happened the, the locals used to wait till the dry season and the water level had dropped and then they'd net it and stun it and pump certain areas out uh, but we had the big drought of course the other year and uh, I think there was just basically a couple of little mud ponds left hardly anything left at all so we have gone back and checked it and, it, and it, it, it's still the same unfortunately uh, the biggest java barbs that we got in here uh, we caught those at a fishery in Kampang Pet, right near the city centre. It was 100 baht a day there, and uh, you just you allowed one rod, and if you caught any tilapia or Java barb, you were allowed to take as many as you caught. So, yeah, we used to we used to do that, to do quite well there. We used to fish quite hard and fill up a giant ice. What, what do you call it? Like the big ice boxes that you see, and uh, we had a little portable air pump. And uh, we bring them back, and we put. That's what we stocked our um, little pond near the house with. So most of those are in here now. So we've got five left in the tilapia pond. And um, we also got given a couple of bags of free ones from the guy who, who bought the Mekongs and Siamese carp. Slightly different strain. So yeah, it's, yeah we've got a really nice selection of of different barbs now at different sizes. Uh, the ones that have been catching in the the shrimp traps have been so fat incredible we have been getting a little bit of algae on the top now you can just see it around here which is all good so as the fish get bigger we will obviously have to start feeding it more and more and a lot of these fish you know they've got the potential to grow quite big if you feed them so i did try to get on camera i used my my phone one early one morning when all the walking catfish were were spawning in the grass just over here on the right 
uh, but it was an epic fail. I, I couldn't get any decent footage, so I, I binned it off. Uh, also, we've got a, two spawning grounds for the barbs, but one seems to double up for the tilapia. These barbs, it's almost like non stop spawning. All right, let's get through here. Yeah. No goats out here for six days so far. Gonna have uh, 14 days rest in the pasture, let it grow taller and keep them off the, uh, the parasites. Yes, yeah, so all the, not all the catfish, but there's a good 20 or 30 catfish in here most mornings. So I just didn't get my hat together to get it on, on camera. So you could just see where the grass ends there. That's where the shelf starts to taper down. Nice gradual slope. We're still waiting for Macro Man to, to come back and work his magic. Oh, some fish bub bubbing in the shallows there. Uh, but the, the water level's so high now, a lot of the areas that we wanted him to tinker with, they're gonna have to wait till the, the levels drop. But if he does get his ass back from Chiang Mai, we've got a few of the jobs for him to do. So the idea these areas here that flood during the rainy season, some of them we'd like making a little bit deeper and uh, but var variable depths uh, this is the area here that the the tilapia and the the barbs seem to like to spawn there's a there's a deep sort of like gully along here we'll say deep it's only a few inches deeper than everywhere else but you can see there's not much vegetation and they uh they like to i'm not sure how they do it but whatever they're doing they're doing right up against the the side of the grass Guy next door getting his plot of land ready for his rice. Pasture getting taller, that's good. Oh, I had some great time down here watching the the barb spawning because it's only about four or five inches deep along here, and uh, yeah, they were having a right old time in here. A little bit quieter today then maybe because the, the temperatures dropped the last couple of days you tend to get the snakehead and the catfish hanging around in this bay here so i, I presume they're they're ambushing their prey sometimes get the the bigger sawai hanging around there don't forget guys some of you will know we've got the we've got macro man to dig something called the glory hole down there there is a in, in the hope that you know one or two big fish might use that as a as a favorite hidey hole and a good place to drop your worm go islands greening up nicely most of them gone back in the house now it's still a little bit early for them old Geraldine's still in the house she's not getting up i don't think she'll be getting out anymore uh, still no shift on the situation with uh selling gates in Thailand with the current lockdown. Yeah, I'll try and pick it out. Somewhere around there is a little white dot. That's the elephant foot mushrooms. We've got to pick a load of those and send them off to Toon's sister. This is about as far as it gets for the height of the, the level of the water in the lake coming up onto the shelf. It normally stops around here and then it gradually gets a little bit higher and higher as you go down there. Maybe, you know, scoop out couple of meters down and uh, build up another area and then scoop out the other side have some hyacinth beds but then we've got a nice raised clean area for for fishing plenty of fish coming up I fancy getting the rod out we're still trying to source our red tails uh, tigers and red tail tiger crosses maybe some Asian red tails three or four chow prior catfish uh, can't have too many of them because they they do eat big fish arapaima a, few, a handful of those uh, i think that'd be about it we're trying to get hold of uh, julian's carp as well so we put an order in for that we'll just wait into the confirmation and organized delivery or pickup but yeah so it's been a bit of a struggle getting the last few species we're not buying anything big everything's small I personally don't think there's any rush to to buy stuff the the size that's ready to catch. I quite like I quite like seeing the fish grow as well and the current economic climate over the world just not not Thailand obviously it's 
I don't think we're uh, I don't think we're in any rush to to spend big money on big fish and then try and get people to come here and fish. If we don't spend too much on stock in the lake, it doesn't really owe us anything. You know, a few bucketfuls of small fish isn't very expensive. Uh, but what they eventually turn into is, well, I think it's a huge commodity. That's why we put so many sawai in here, the, the striped catfish. Uh, a lot of Thai people eat those and they like to fish for them, they're not too hard to catch. So most of those are, are for the pan. And uh, same with the walking catfish, tilapia, barbs. There's no problem selling selling fish around here. The, the problem you have is if you dig a fish pond and you're, you're feeding them pellet all the time, it's hard to make a living from that. Whereas if you've got a bit of a lake, then yeah, I think solar lights, uh, putting your vegetation in, uh, a little bit of supplement feed like we are with the uh, the vegetables that are going in there. Uh, and then your predatory fish will, will sort themselves out as far as the, the prey fish go. Well, that's the idea anyway. Just trying to create a, a natural balance, same as when we're, we're doing the uh, the vegetables and fruit and that not interfering too much you know just set everything up and uh, set it going and try and let nature uh, work its magic and uh, sort things out as it should be not a bad morning is it eh? look at that sky <laughs> 